the rationale for abortion being illegal is that it ends another human life, not that my religion teaches that it's incorrect. And the science backs up the fact that it is a individual life. There is no way to objectively define what a human being is as an individual without including the unborn in that. Hey fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Another one that's important to bring up, uh, they'll say, stop forcing your religion on me. I've gone over this argument so many times, I'm blue in the face, but the thing is, you do not have to be a religious person to come down on the pro-life side. Now, obviously, for many Americans, that is the starting point. Their religion teaches that abortion is wrong because it teaches that people in the womb are indeed people. The Bible says that, the Old Testament says that, so if you're Jewish, you fall right along that, and the truth is the Quran says that. And I say this because I'm studying the Quran right now. I've read several passages that talk about people in the womb, and it talks about them as people. Now, there's a whole bunch of stuff in the Quran I do not agree with. But if you're looking at all three of the major Abrahamic religions, which constitutes the vast majority of the human race when it comes to religion, every single one of those teachings very clearly point to the fact that killing a child inside its, well, its mother's womb is wrong. And so because of that, you can understand why people come to the conclusion of, oh, well, you only believe that because of your religion. But the science also confirms that. And you can make these arguments without ever going to a place of religion. Now, if you determine in this conversation that the person is religious, it might not be a bad idea to appeal to that. But if you don't, then you have two options. You can either find a way to convince the person that the Bible is a reliable source of moral clarity and moral wisdom, and we should adhere to it, or you can do the other route, which is you can make this case without ever talking about religion. I have on many occasions. In fact, you'll notice most of the rebuttals that I've talked about so far, none of them have to do with religion. Why? Because the religious argument's extremely easy to make. When someone asks, uh, why is abortion wrong, and there's somebody that believes in the Bible, all I have to do is open up the scripture and show them some verses. That's it. So I'm making these cases on non-religious grounds because I know that that's not what appeals to the vast majority of the people that are in favor of abortion. So um, the thing is, Christianity, even more so than Judaism or Islam, because those are both theocracies. Like they, they call for theocracies. Israel in the form of the nation of Israel, Islam in the form of Sharia law. Christianity has none of that. And so if you are a Christian, you actually don't believe in theocracies. In fact, Jesus had the opportunity to set up a theocracy and turned it down. He says, I am not a king. My kingdom is not of this world. And so because of that, Christians don't believe that. And one way to illustrate this to somebody, if you do find yourself in this conversation, is to say, look, there's a lot of things my religion teaches are wrong that I don't think should be illegal. If you're like me, you can use the example of, I think that it's, it's very wrong to lie but I also believe in freedom of speech. I don't think that you should be prosecuted for lying. There's actually a specific part of the Constitution in the Fifth Amendment that says that you don't have to bear witness against yourself. So, uh, you know, you have the ability to lie, even though that's one of the sins that is most railed against in the Scripture. And so you can point that out and say, so my being against abortion as a law is not a product of my religious belief that it's morally wrong. I do believe it's morally wrong, but there's a lot of things I think that are morally wrong that shouldn't be illegal. Uh, as, as horrible as adultery is, I don't want cops running around <laughs> after cheating wives and cheating husbands and figuring out where they're going to see their, mis uh, their mister or their mistress. That's not a thing I want government doing, but it doesn't change the fact that it's an incredible moral sin. And so... The, re the rationale for abortion being illegal is that it ends another human life, not that my religion teaches that it's incorrect. And the science backs up the fact that it is an individual life. There is no way to objectively define what a human being is as an individual without including the unborn in that, unless you specifically say who has been born. Like, you have to basically use the word to define the word in that sense. The only way to exclude it is if you include uh, that they're not born. 
So that's the only way to do that. Any other way that you objectively, scientifically define what a human being is, an unborn child would fit that mold because they have their own set of DNA, their own incredibly unique genetic code that no other person on the planet has unless they are a twin, in which case there's just more than one body. But in any way that you could define it, that is a new person. They have their own organs. They have their own heart. They have their own circulatory system. They have their own nervous system. Their reactions are different than their mother's reaction. We can actually see inside the womb babies that will be scared, sucking their thumb, move around. These are all things that are independent of the mother. If you've ever been pregnant or known somebody that was, in my case, you know what that's like because sometimes you're just sitting there and the baby kicks around. You know, that, that, that's the way that it works. And so because of that, you can make this case through scientific means. You don't have to go to the religion. And normally when this happens, when they try to make this case, what they will try to do is they will cite, well, religion should be separate from the state. In fact, Thomas Jefferson, who, uh, you know, it, it is funny that they quote Jefferson because even though I love Jefferson and think that he is a good person to cite, he was nowhere near the Constitutional Convention. He was actually in France at the time. But regardless, they'll say that, well, because Thomas Jefferson said a separation of church and state, which he said in a letter to the Danesbury Baptist, which actually he was saying that the uh, state should not get involved with the church, not the other way around. But anyway, even if you know all that, they'll say that Thomas Jefferson, well, he really said that the church and state should be separate. And so uh, really, even if you have this religious belief, then you it shouldn't impose on me. Now, again, you can make that case without making the religious argument. However, let's actually go to Thomas Jefferson and see how well that argument holds up when you read his actual words. So this is from Thomas Jefferson's notes on the state of Virginia, where he is talking about the Native American population and actually mentions abortion directly in this book. So he says the, and he's talking about Native Americans here, if you read the earlier paragraph, the Native American women are submitted to unjust drudgery. This, I believe, is the case with every barbarous people. With such force is law. The stronger sex therefore imposes on the weaker. It is civilization alone which replaces women in the enjoyment of their natural equality. They raise fewer children than we do. The causes of this are to be found not in a difference of nature, but of circumstance. The women very frequently attending the men in their parties of war and of hunting, childbearing becomes extremely inconvenient for them. It is said, therefore, that they have learnt the practice of procuring abortion by the use of some vegetable, and that it even extends to prevent conduction for a considerable time after. During these parties, they are exposed to numerous hazards, to excessive exertion, to the greatest extremities of hunger. So think about that. What is Thomas Jefferson actually saying there? He's saying that Native American women are oppressed and that the Native American men take advantage of them. And then he lists all of the ways that they are being taken advantage of and not, as he put it, being held in equal regard. They don't have their equality because of how they're being treated by men and listed among those treatments is their men force them to get abortions. By the way, Thomas is 100% right on this. I mean, he could not, you could not come up with a more clear, convincing piece of evidence that Thomas Jefferson was against abortion and actually thought it was misogyny and that women were being abused by being forced to abort their children even though it doesn't say that they were forced specifically, he's saying that, the, that they culturally have these abortions on a regular basis and that it is bad for the women to have to do that. And so he's making the case that abortion is wrong and that it actually abuses women because it is men taking advantage of them and he's 100% right. But it's just funny that the same people that try to quote Jefferson as their justification for religion not playing into it, well, if you actually look at Jefferson's stance on abortion and what he thought of it. He thought of that it was absolutely morally reprehensible that Native Americans were aborting their own children and that it was actually keeping women from being equal because it was keeping them from being mothers. It was keeping them from being the people that God intended them to be. 
So there's a little bit of a, a further understanding of this. Let's go back to Jefferson and something that he said in a letter to John Tyler in 1810. He discussed this uh, when he was talking about Blackstone. And he said, Blackstone, William Blackstone, is to us what the Al-Quran, which is what he called the Quran, uh, is to the Mohammedans or Muslims, you know, derived from the name Muhammad. That everything which is necessary is in him, and what is not in him is not necessary. So essentially what he's saying is when we're talking about American common law, he cites William Blackstone saying, basically, if Blackstone said it, then it's what we believe. If Blackstone didn't say it, it's not necessary. And he even equates it to the religious fervor of a religious figure like the Muslims revere the Quran. He's saying if Blackstone said it, it's basically law. And that's what he believed in. And he believed that when it came to legal scholarship, he was the first one. So let's look at what William Blackstone said about this issue. For if a woman is quick with child and by a potion or otherwise kills it in her womb, or if any one beat her, whereby the child dies in her body, and she is delivered of a dead child, this, though not murder, was by the ancient law homicide or manslaughter. But at the present, it is not looked upon in quite so atrocious a light, though it remains a very heinous misdemeanor. So in other words, the guy that Thomas Jefferson said, if you want to know about American case law, if you want the definitive case of what we believe is common law here in America, whatever William Blackstone said, it goes. You read what William Blackstone said. He says, yeah, if something causes the child to die in the womb, that is a very heinous crime. He says it's not murder, but you also have to remember who he's putting the odious on. He's saying that the woman that engages in this or the man that beats her and the child dies, he says, this should count as homicide. And he's saying that it should be a very heinous misdemeanor. In other words, there should be pretty stiff penalties for something like this. He believed that abortion was wrong and that the law ought to protect the child inside the mother. But if that's not enough for you, let's go ahead and look at Virginia common law at 1810 at the time. And remember that these laws were crafted by the very same people that crafted our Constitution. Now, the Constitution doesn't address this because it's a state's issue. It's a state law, which this decision rightfully noticed. But here you go. This is Virginia common law, which the founders agreed with and, and put together. But if a woman be with child and any gives her a potion to destroy the child within her, notice how the language very closely resembles Blackstone, and she take it and it works so strongly that it kills her, this is murder, for it was not given to her to cure her of a disease, but unlawfully to destroy the child within her. And therefore, he that gives her a potion to this end must take the hazard, and if it kills the mother, it is murder. Also, if a woman be quick with child, and by a potion or otherwise killeth it in her womb, or if a man beat her whereby the child dieth in her body, and she is delivered of a dead child, this is a great misprison, but no murder. So what is that saying there? It is clarifying and giving weight to what Blackstone believed, which is if some third party, whether accidentally or on purpose, hurts the mother, and it causes injury to where it kills the child, it's a bad misdemeanor, and it should carry a very stiff penalty, but it is not murder. However, if a person, and remember that this is in a section specifically talking about surgeons and doctors in the law, if somebody, presumably a doctor, gives her a potion designed to kill the child within her, that is murder. So all these people that are making the case that, well, you just want to go after doctor, you just want to go after women and you want women to be held accountable for murder. No, no. Even back in Virginia, when all of this started, even they recognized that there could be some legal penalties for the women, presumably based on their behavior. But for the doctors, it was murder and they should be tried as murderers because they should know better. They should know that the child inside is indeed a child. 
And so the precedent was set back then. We already understand what the precedent was at the time. So when you're talking about, you know, all of that going on, that's really how you win that argument. Uh, another one here, um, you know, the idea that you don't force your religion on somebody. Well, I'm sorry, but the very man that said that also believed that it was not imposing his religion on anyone to hold ab abortion as murder. So that argument simply doesn't fly. This is usually the part of the video where I ask you to like this video and subscribe to my show and click the notification bell. Does that guarantee you're going to get notifications when I post new content? Honestly, the way that YouTube censors conservatives, I really doubt it. But you know what liking and subscribing does do, for sure? It ticks off the dark cyber overlords at Google when they see those likes and subscriptions despite shadow banning my conservative content. So you really should like and subscribe, if nothing else, just to stick it to them.